Hi there, Sugar Snaps. Welcome back to the studio. If you're new here, my name's Brittany. I'm the creator of Textile Indie, a fiber artist and basket weaver. And here on this channel, we cover basketry, natural dyeing, wet felting, and currently we're in the middle of a tapestry weaving series. So check out the description below for links to all the previous videos in this series so that you can get your tapestry loom made from PVC pipe and get it warped in order to start your weaving project. You can also find a blog post where I have lots of resources and all the tools and materials that you will need for this project in the description as well. So be sure to check that out. But without further ado, let's dive into getting some weaving done on our tapestry warp. So for this project, or this step in the project, I have my PVC pipe tapestry loom. The bead chain is up at the top and at the bottom edge here. It is holding my warp threads separated. So I have about eight ends per inch or EPI. So that's eight warp threads per inch. I've warped this up with some seam twine and you can find that in the description below if you want to use that material as well. This warp is set up to do a very simple tapestry design. You can find this design in the blog post in the description below and follow along with me if you would like. I'm going to tuck this in here under one side of the warp because this is a double-sided warp on this loom here. Tuck it in here so you can see what I'm doing. And then I have my seam twine and some wool weft yarn. I'm going to be doing a bit of weaving at the base of my warp here in order to prepare for the tapestry weaving. So we're not going to start on the design just yet or working off of our cartoon just yet. We're going to weave what's called the header. So for this tapestry, what I'm going to do is weave a section of material that we can fold under the woven design and it will get tacked into the back of the tapestry so that we have a nice finished edge. You can also build your tapestry so you have a section of twining and then the ends of your warps get tied into little tassels and you have a little tasseled end at the end ends and the upper edge of your tapestry piece. But for this one, I wanted to do the folded hem. So I'm going to be weaving that today. To weave a hemmed header, we're going to have six different steps. The first one is going to be an ordering cord. Then we're going to do a half an inch of waste yarn. This isn't actually waste yarn, it's weft yarn that we weave to create some organization of our warp threads. Then we'll do one row of twining and then some warp as weft. Then we'll do six picks of weft weaving and then we'll finish off with some sumac and this will be the edge that is folding. What we are working on here we'll be repeating at the end of the tapestry project at the top of the tapestry. So these six sections of weaving will be repeating later on in this process as well. The first section of this header is going to be the ordering cord. So use your seam thread and I'm using 20 over six, and I'm going to measure out four times the width of my tapestry loom because I want to have three rows of this ordering cord. Now with this piece, I'm going to tie it onto one side of my tapestry loom, one of the pipes on the side. And this is the only section of the tapestry that is tied to the pipes. We're just creating an ordering cord across. So I have one end tied and I'm gonna pull out to the other end and now go in and weave under over all the way across. And the way I like to do this, you can do this with a chopstick or come in with your fingers and pick up every other one of your threads. So over, under, over, under, over, under, and grab it with your other hand and send your your warp as weft thread through and then continue the pattern across, making sure to keep that under over pattern all the way across and alternating between warp threads so that you're not catching two warp threads at once. It's alternating all the way across. 
and my warp is pretty wide so I'm having to do about three passes to be able to pick up all these threads. Okay, so pull it all the way through once you've gone all the way across and pull tight so that it's originating over here on this side of the pipe and now wrap it around the other side of the pipe. So I'm looping it around and back to the front and now it's stretched across like so. And what the this part of the weaving is doing is helping to evenly separate your warp threads so that they're evenly spaced and the tapestry can form nice and smoothly and all the warp threads will be separated across the tapestry. Now we're gonna pass and do another pick in this direction, which means we're going to weave another row of plain weave opposite of the first row that you did. So if you need to get in close and make sure that you're picking up the right thre threads, please do. Having lots of light is helpful to be able to see this as well. And you'll pick up the opposite thread. So where I was over on the last pass, this time I'm going to be under, so weaving opposite. And the nice thing about starting this ordering cord so that you're attached to the PVC pipe here on the edge is that you can pull it tight without worrying about the edge pulling in and causing wonky edges on your tapestry. So I've completed a second pick or pass across. A pick is one time across. And now we're going to do one more. So bring this around and underneath this, this side pipe and then bring it over. And one last time opposite the row we just completed, do another pick across. And sometimes if you figure out your pattern and then you bring your hand up higher, it's easier to pick up the threads because it's slightly looser the higher you go. And pass your thread through. Next week we'll be covering plain weave and going over how to start structuring and weaving your tapestry in plain weave or over under weave which is similar to what we're doing right now. In that lesson I'll show you how to create a bundle of yarn to weave with so that you're not pulling the entire length through when you're working with long lengths of yarn, that can be tedious. And we'll also go over how to incorporate a shed stick, which will pick up every other thread in or warp in one direction so that when you pass your yarn in that direction, you can just lift the shed stick up, pass your yarn through and complete a whole row of weaving without having to pick each individual thread. Okay, now we have these rows in place. I have a cheap dollar store comb here. I'm gonna come in and pack this weaving close together, get those rows nice and tightly together by pressing this down. And a tool like this is referred to as a beater because you're beating the rows down so that they're packed nice and close. There's a lot of more official looking beaters, wooden ones and pieces that are specifically meant for weaving. Something this simple works as well, just a comb pick. Now with this end finished, we did our three rows of the ordering cord. I'm gonna loop this under again on this side and tie a knot or tie this end to this side of the loom. So I'm ending this edge. And this bit of weaving will be discarded at the end of the project. Now using some of the yarn that you're going to use for the weft of your tapestry or what you're weaving the pattern with, you're going to weave half an inch in plain weave. So come in and let's measure out 10 widths of the tapestry loom from your weft yarn. And we'll cut this down. And now take your end and pinch it between your thumb and your forefinger. And now you're gonna pass it between two of your fingers, loop it around and do a figure eight around your fingers to create a butterfly. We'll go over this again in later lessons 
but this is a good way to order your yarn in so that it doesn't get all tangled as you weave. When you're working with bundles of yarn, it's super easy to get them tangled and cause frustration as you're trying to weave sections of your tapestry and having to continuously untangle your work. And then this end that you are pinching, you can loop around the center point, loop it around a couple times. And now I have a bundle that I can pull from, but it's ordered and organized. And now I can continue weaving. So opposite of this previous row, we're going to weave half an inch of this waist yarn. So go in and in the plain weave, weave this across until you have half an inch of this weft yarn. And you'll stick your bundle through those layers and pull through. And now at this point, you're starting to create the sides of your tapestry. So it's important to go in as you turn and make sure that your edges have some looseness. So we'll go over how to create enough ease in the body of your tapestry to allow the edges to stay straight up and down. So before turning, I'm going to leave a tail that's about five inches to the side of my tapestry here. And then I'm gonna lift this thread or this weaver yarn up and come in and pack it down so that I have a bit of looseness. I don't want any bubbling, but a bit of looseness in the amount of yarn I'm putting into the fabric so that the fabric has the ability to stay straight up and down without pulling in. If your tension is too tight, the sides of your tapestry will start to curve in like this, and then you'll have a wonky tapestry. So now I have that first row done. I need some more yarn, so I'm going to open this up, lift off another row's worth of yarn, and then wrap this around so that that can sit there. And now, I'll pick in the opposite direction and I'm doing a section at a time. So going through, picking opposite for a section and then going from there. Make sure that you don't accidentally miss any warp threads as you're picking these up and changing direction. And don't pull it all the way through either. I'm just pulling it through enough that I can pass it under my warp threads without pulling tight yet. And then when you're all the way across, you can come in and pull at an angle. So I'm at an angle from this edge. And then from this far side that we just wove from, you're going to pack it down like so across, working out any ease, but allowing a little bit of a bubble over here. And continue to work like this, making sure leave room as you go in that edge so that it doesn't pull in. If you find you're getting frustrated picking the threads with your fingers, you can come in with a skewer or a chopstick and come in and use this to pick up the threads as well. This will just help you move maybe a little bit faster and because it's a finer point, often it's easier to pick up the threads than with your fingers. Again, we'll be adding some shedding devices to be able to make this easier in the next lesson, but I want you to be able to pick these threads yourself and see how this is working before we set that up. So I'll stick my, my yarn through by picking up a segment and then pulling through and then pick up the next segment and just make sure you don't accidentally wrap it around a thread. As you're working this section of the weaving, make sure that you're packing it nice and tight. We don't want the warp threads to show through this yarn as you're weaving. We're going to be packing the rows nice and tight. If they loosen up and they're separated more, then you're going to see the warp threads through your work and your fabric won't be as strong as if 
you packed it more tightly. When you've finished weaving your half an inch of waist yarn, go ahead and cut any excess yarn you have. So you have about five inches of tail. Let that sit to the side. And now we're going to do some twining. So come in with your seam twine yet again and measure out three lengths or three widths of your tapestry loom like so, and then cut this piece. And now fold this piece in half so that your ends match up. And this loop, we're going to loop around one of these warp threads. So bring one end under the first warp thread on the left. And now the piece that's on top, we're gonna come over to the next warp, tuck it behind and back to the front. So we're going behind this warp thread, back to the front, and now they're floating back on top. Again, the piece that's on top of this second warp thread is going to shift over and under the third warp and pull back to the top. And now we'll continue all the way across and you end up with a twist or a figure eight between each of the warp threads by doing this twining. So the one that's on top shifts over behind the next warp and then have them float on top of your warps so that you can keep them oriented as you're working. So your warp threads end up looking like this. And there is the twining across to hold that waist yarn in place and it helps to order the warp threads even more so that they're more evenly spaced. Now we're going to do six picks or across the warp back and forth six times. So one, two, three, four, five, and six using the same yarn that we used for the warp. So measure out eight widths of your warp so that you have the same width multiplied by eight. Cut this length and then weave this piece in plain weave as well. You can start with the threads hanging off the same side that you've been leaving them or opposite and leave a five inch tail on the end here. And now the point of this warp as weft, which is using warp threads to weave the weft of your tapestry. The reason we do this is to create a section of the fabric that's very stiff that we can use as the structure for folding the bottom border of the tapestry under, and we can use this section to sew or stitch that piece under. So we're just doing six passes, six picks across. So weave your six rows with this warp thread, and then we'll move on to the next segment. And here is the finished section of warp as weft. Now grab your weft yarn once again, and we're going to weave another six rows, just like we did with the warp yarn here, but we're going to do it with the weft yarn. So weave another six rows of plain weave with your weft yarn. This is the last section of the tapestry header that will be folded to the back of the tapestry and create that nice finished structure. Ideally, you would weave this section of the header, the piece that folds to the back of the tapestry, in the same color that you're going to start out your tapestry design. So for this design, whatever this first stripe at the base of the tapestry is, that would be the color that you weave in. Here I'm just using a nice natural neutral color in order to get this in place. But for your tapestry, try to use the same yarn color that you're going to do that initial stripe with. So take some time to think that through and figure figure out what color that would be, and then weave your six rows in that color. And with that section of weft weaving, we're now going to finish out with some sumac. So now with a length of the weft yarn, this is the same color yarn that you're going to be weaving your design with, we're going to do what's called sumac, which is looping around the warp to create kind of a bubbled edge which will then be the base or the folded bottom of the tapestry. And this sumac helps to 
create that folded edge and have a nice finished bottom. So starting from the left side of your tapestry loom, leaving about a five inch tail to the side here, I'm going to lay this on top of my warp and then take the end, the, the right side end, and bring it underneath this first warp thread and towards the left. So I'm going in on the right and then bringing it up to the left. And then I'll loop that around and tuck that close. And now to the second warp thread, I'm working on this warp thread now, go under on the right and bring it up on the left and we'll loop that around like so. So we're creating little loops around this warp thread. So it's creating a loop right here around this yarn and that gets tucked in. So again, if you go to the end of your yarn here, you're gonna come to this third or fourth warp thread over. I'm gonna go under the warp thread from the right. So if you lift it up, it's easier. Under from the right, up on the left, pull it around. And now you have a loop around that warp thread. Tuck that in nice and close and then continue to do this all the way across. And there's the completed sumac. And that's the finished header for the beginning of your tapestry. We'll be repeating this same process backwards, starting with sumac and working our way up when we get to the end of the tapestry. So once your design is all woven so that you can have a piece to fold to the back of the top of your tapestry and finish off that edge as well. Nice job getting the start of your tapestry going. And I hope this kind of gave you a glimpse of what the process would be like. Again, in the next video, we'll be going over how to set up sheds so that picking is a lot easier and a lot more efficient. Uh, but I wanted you to experience picking with your fingers, one, because it is tedious and it will help you appreciate having the shed set up. And two, because when you're starting out in tapestry, it's good to be able to see the over under pattern and slowing down to see how that works really helps to gain that um, understanding and the structure of your tapestry warp. So now all of our warp threads are nicely ordered and evenly spaced. We had the bead chain in there to help start that out. But even here, you can see on the end, my warp threads with the bead chain are still kind of disorganized and not very evenly separated. This one's quite wide. But now here in this section, my warp threads are nice and evenly spaced and the tension is nicely placed because we did this prep work. If you enjoyed working on this tapestry and doing some weaving in fabric, you may also enjoy weaving baskets. And I have a 12 month subscription program in basketry. If you're interested in read baskets, it's called the Basket a Month Club. You can find information in the description below on my website, Textile Indie at Basket a Month Club. There's a menu item for it. It's a series of baskets. Every month you'll get emailed a video link and a instruction manual to go through a different basket and each basket consecutively builds on the skills of previous baskets. So you'll work through 12 different baskets, build your basket weaving repertoire and knowledge of techniques and end up with 12 beautiful baskets that you hand wove and the ability to weave baskets on your own. If you're interested in joining me in that program, be sure to check out my website, textileindie.com and check out the Basket a Month Club tab. Well, friends, we've finished the header for this tapestry and we're ready to move on to weaving. But in the next video, we're going to go over how to set up your sheds. So be sure to check back next week for how to do that. And then we'll move on to weaving in plain weave and all that good stuff, starting to work on the design of this tapestry. Thanks for joining me today. Be sure to check out all the resources in the description below, and I will see you in my next video. Happy weaving.